A new New York Times poll spells bad news for Brandon. Apparently, the governor of Illinois has never heard of the Second Amendment. And we've got to change some bird names because, you know, racism. Stay tuned, everybody. For the best meat you have ever eaten in your life, go to samsbutchershop.com. Enter the coupon code Triple T when you check out for a 10% discount. And a happy Monday to you all. Hello, everybody. I am Trailer Trash Tim. How's your mama and them? Thank you so much for joining me here as we kick off another great week here on the Triple T channel. I appreciate you uh, popping in. Let's see what's going on. I want to start with some good news, really good news if you were a supporter of Donald Trump and if, you, if you're not fond of uh, the current occupant of the White House. There's a, a poll that was released just the other day on the 5th of November, just the other day. This poll was commissioned by the ultra left wing leaning New York Times. So um, just factor that into your conclusions when you hear the results of this poll. Former President Donald Trump tops Joe Biden in five of six crucial swing states per polling from the far left New York Times. Uh, here are the numbers the state of Nevada. Trump is up by 11 points on Biden, 52 to 41%. <coughs> Pardon me. He's up in Arizona, 48 to 44%, plus four. No, I, I'm sorry. That's Pennsylvania. He's up, up in Arizona by five, 49 to 44% in Arizona. These are all states uh, where uh, Biden supposedly won in 2020. Uh, Trump is up by six in the state of Georgia, uh, 49 to 43 percent. In Michigan, he's up by five, 48 to 43 percent. And in Wisconsin, uh, he is down actually by two percent, uh, 45 for Trump, 47 for Biden. Um, I don't see a margin of error in this poll, but what is significant about this poll? is that it was it was commissioned by the New York Times, right? Far left. I mean, radical left New York Times. Uh, so that's not good news for uh, Brandon, is it, at all? Uh, this, this poll basically shows Trump winning this thing rather handily. Now, of course, I know what, you, what a lot of you are saying, and, and I hear you. You know, what difference does it make if our votes don't count? I don't have a comeback for that. Uh, hopefully, some of these states have done some housekeeping to uh, clean up their act so that we won't have a repeat of 2020. I hope they can. I, I, I remain convinced that if we have any sort of fair and equitable election whatsoever, that Trump would absolutely swamp uh, Joe Biden. It remains to be seen what happens, but this poll spells out uh, a lot of bad news for Joe Biden. And if it's bad news for Biden, then it's good news for America, right? All right, let's move on. All right, I had somebody that wanted me to cover this story in the comments the other day, and I got to look and do a little homework about it, and I'm glad I did. So th I think it was Jason who asked me to look into this. Um, I'll probably get demonetized for this because I'm not using my cards. I'm just going to have to come out and blurt out the words that I don't think I'm supposed to say. But who knows? I don't think anybody knows what the YouTube rules are. It's just, you know, I just dive right in and say what I need to say, and they can do whatever they want to do. This appeared in uh, U.S. News and World Report last week. Uh, the headline reads, Federal Appeals Court Upholds Illinois Semi-Automatic Weapons Ban. This is a picture of the governor of New Orleans. Uh, New Orleans. This is a picture of the governor of Illinois. His name is J.B. Pritzker. This guy is, uh, there he is. J.B. Pritzker. This guy is a train wreck. I'm, I've known about him for quite some time. And uh, he's he is just a train wreck. Uh, from the Associated Press. A federal, hang on just a minute, folks. I want to make sure my mic was on. A federal appeals court on Friday upheld Illinois prohibition on high-power semi-automatic weapons, 
refusing to put a hold on the on the law adopted in response to the mass killing of seven people at a 2022 parade in the Chicago suburb of Highland Park. A three-judge panel of the 7th District U.S. Court of Appeals voted two to one on the issue. The majority recognized a difference between firearms for personal use and those the state reserves for trained professionals, semi-automatic weapons, including the popular AR-15. There is one long, there is a long tradition unchanged from the time when the Second Amendment was added to the Constitution supporting a dis- distinction between weapons and accessories designed for military or law enforcement use and weapons designed for personal use, Judge Diane Wood said in the opinion, the legislation now before us respects and relies on that distinction. That is a bunch of horse manure. She said there's a long tradition unchanged from the time when the Second Amendment was added to the Constitution that supports a distinction between weapons and accessories designed for military or law enforcement use and weapons designed for personal use. No, there is not a long tradition of that nature, Judge Woods. Judge Wood, there's just the Second Amendment, and the Second Amendment made no such distinction as you maintain. Now, left-wing lunatics like you make the distinction, but that's not in the Constitution. There is no distinction made. As you uh, allege, let me move on here. At least eight other states in the District of Columbia have some sort of prohibition on semi-automatic weapons. The law adopted by a lame duck session of the legislature in January prohibits the possession of manufacture or sale of semi-automatic rifles in high-capacity magazines. It takes effect January the 1st of next year. Known as the Protect Illinois Communities Act, it bans dozens of specific brands or types of rifles and handguns, 50 caliber guns, attachments, and rapid firing devices. No rifle will be allowed to accommodate more than 10 rounds with a 15 round limit for handguns. Uh, Those who own such guns, when the law was enacted, have to register them. Uh, with the Illinois State Police. Uh, then Governor Pritzker weighed in. The Protect Illinois Communities Act is a common sense law that will keep Illinois Illinoisans safe, he said in the statement. Despite constant attacks by the gun lobby that puts ideology over people's lives, here in Illinois, we have stood up and said no more to weapons of war on our streets. Uh, let me ask you a question, Governor Pritzker. You pass all the laws you want to pass. Uh, do you really want us to believe that there's going to be no more weapons of war on your streets? Do you believe, Governor Pritzker, that by passing a law such as this that bans semi-automatic weapons, that they're going to be non-existent now, that this is going to be the end of gun violence in Chicago, that the murders are going to just end overnight? I mean, some of this is just... Common sense, which uh, Democrats, of course, are devoid of. They don't have common sense. If they do have it, they they never use it. Do you really believe, Governor Pritzker and Judge Wood, that when you ban uh, semi-automatic weapons, that uh, the criminals who use such devices are going to just turn them in and say, okay, we all know that they're they're against the law now, so we can't use them anymore. It's like the folly of gun-free zones, okay? You're not supposed to shoot anybody there. That was a gun-free zone. Folks, criminals don't obey the laws. Criminals don't obey the signs. They're never going to. They never have. They just laugh, criminals do, when you pass measures like this. When you pass laws like this, criminals don't they don't bat an eye. It doesn't matter to them what laws you pass. This is just dressing. It's just fluff around the edges. It means nothing because law-abiding people are not the problem when it comes to gun violence. You can put an AR-15 in the hands of any law-abiding citizen and and it's going to be just fine. There'll be no crimes committed in the hands of a law-abiding citizen. Law-abiding citizens are not the problem. 
criminals are the problem and because people like J.B. Pritzker and the past mayor of Chicago, Laurie Lightfoot and the new mayor, whatever his name is, he's even worse than her if that's imaginable. If you would deal with criminals instead of inanimate objects, that would solve your problem. But instead, you always punish and penalize law-abiding citizens as if that's going to solve your crime problem. It is utterly ridiculous, and as I have maintained on this channel, the why don't you liberals, why don't you Democrats, why don't you have the guts and the honesty to, and, the, and the integrity to simply say what you really want? Because all of us know, all of us that are using our brains know what it is you really want. You want an end to the Second Amendment. That's what you really want. Why don't you just say that instead of playing around the edges and say, well, uh, we all support the Second Amendment, but you, we're going to pass a statute so that you can't own these types of weapons. What you really mean is you wish to God there was no Second Amendment. That's what you really mean. You just ain't got the guts to say it, and you damn well know it. If people like Biden and Obama and Nancy Pelosi and J.B. Pritzker would simply speak the tr if, you could, if you could just give them a truth serum, if you could inject them with a truth serum and say, okay, now tell us how you really feel, they would say, damn, that Second Amendment. I wish we could get rid of it. That's what they really want, folks. But they just play around the edges, try and do everything they can to ban this and ban that and ban this type of weapon and that type of weapon and ban that type of handgun and that type of rifle. What they really want is to ban the Second Amendment. They're just not going to come out and say that, okay? Because most people in America support the Second Amendment, I dare say. And if a Democrat had the guts to come out and say the truth about themselves, we don't support the Second Amendment, they, they wouldn't get elected to office. And they know it. And that's why they won't say the truth. They just do what they do. They write these little legislative things, you know, to play around the edges for the children, you know. Don't you know it's for the children because uh, it was a semi-automatic weapon that caused all this carnage in Highland Park in 22, 2022. No, it wasn't. A gun didn't do that. An evil person, a criminal did that. And if you people would deal with criminals and stop punishing law-abiding citizens, it would solve the problem. But you, you won't do that. You ain't got the guts to do that. You're soft on crime, and that's what the problem is. Stop blaming inanimate objects for the problems that afflict you. Go after the criminals. A gun in the hand of a law-abiding citizen is a threat to nobody. Nobody. I live in the country, in the sticks, and I can pretty much guarantee you all my neighbors for miles and miles are all packing heat, and they probably have an assortment of weapons that would hair lip any Democrat. And you know what? I don't feel threatened whatsoever. I feel perfectly safe in my neighborhood and out here in the country. Because it's not the guns. It's the people, folks. It's the people that own them. If you people would sit in Chicago, in Illinois, in New York, in Houston, in Atlanta, in Birmingham, if you'd simply deal with the criminals the way you ought to deal with a criminal, you'd solve your crime problem overnight. But you ain't got the guts to do that, and you know you don't. So that's my take, uh, Jason, on the uh, semi-automatic weapons ban in, in Illinois uh, via Governor Pritzker. The bottom line is... The, the Second Amendment means what it means. It says what it means. It is simple. A child of five could understand the Second Amendment. You have the right in America to bear arms. It's as simple as that. It needs no further explanation. It's as plain as the nose on your face. Uh, people pass these laws all the time. Every one of them should be overturned. They should be turned down in court because they are contrary to the Second Amendment. It's as simple as that. I'm not threatened by law-abiding citizens who want to pack heat. Let them pack heat. That's fine. 
You know what you'll never see a statistic on? You'll never see a statistic on how many crimes were prevented by people who carried a weapon. I had a friend in Atlanta one time, and he told me he was going to work one morning, and he had to stop at a gas station to get gas, and he went inside while uh, he was putting fuel in his vehicle to get a cup of coffee. And uh, when he returned to his car, there was a, a questionable figure approaching him in a hoodie with his hands in his pockets. He had a threatening posture, and he was walking toward my friend. My friend simply reached inside his vehicle and put his hand in the center console and retrieved his little friend, if you know what I mean. He laid his little friend on the roof of his automobile, and he looked over at the would-be criminal, and he said, he showed it to him, and he said, do we have a problem? And as soon as he showed his, the would-be criminal, his little friend, the criminal took his hands out of his pocket. Whoa, whoa, man. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm cool. Now, I don't know what would have happened. Neither does my friend know what would have happened, although it was in downtown Atlanta at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. You think I'd go down there without a, my little friend? <laughs> Dream on. I don't know what would have happened, but he very well could have been mugged or robbed or worse. But you know what? He escaped with his life and no crime was committed. All I know is when he brandished his friend, the person in the hoodie turned around and left. That's all I know. Now, I guarantee you there are crimes that have been prevented because of situations like that where people displayed what they use for self-defense and that uh, defrayed, shall we say, or discouraged a would-be criminal from committing a crime. I, I'm so tired of, of Democrats on the issues of, issue of gun, but guns because they're such hypocrites. They refuse to acknowledge uh, that fact that I just mentioned about guns preventing crime all they say is, well, we've got so many crimes being committed, not by criminals, but by guns, so we've therefore got to get rid of guns. No, that's not how it works. You don't blame an inanimate object. Uh, you know, if you have a wreck, if you have two vehicles at wreck, you don't blame the car. You blame the driver of the car, for heaven's sakes. This is simple. A child in the first grade can understand it. It's just common sense, is it not? All right, let's move on. We've got a problem in America, folks. And we've got to rename our birds because of, you know, racism. More on that in just a minute. Uh, I found this story is was all over the place, but... Um, these, the, the headline, this is in, uh, uh, oh my Lord, it's in NPR. These American birds and dozens more will have to be renamed to remove human monikers. Now, I'm not going to read you the whole story. It'll bore you to tears, but let me just give you the gist of it, all right? Get ready to say goodbye to a lot of familiar bird names like Anna's Hummingbird, Gamble's Quail, Lewis Woodpecker, Bewick's Wren, Bullock's Oriole, and more. That's because the American Ornithological Society has vowed to change the English names of all bird species currently named after people along with any other bird names deemed offensive or exclusionary. Yes, my friends, we can't be offensive with our bird names, don't you know? And then it goes on to give you a list of bird names that may offend some people. You know, we can't have bird names that, that that are offensive or exclusion. We don't want to exclude anybody from our list of bird names. One of the bird names was a, a bird that was named after, brace yourselves, this bird was named, let's see if I can find it real quick. 
Uh, it's right here. I had it marked. Bear with me. Da, 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 da. I got to find this one. Uh, here's one. It was a, uh, it, it, there's a uh, bird that has been renamed the long-tailed duck because its previous name, which NPR won't even tell us what it was. That's how PC they are, was derogatory to Native Americans. Okay, here it is. Uh, there was a small prairie bird that was called the McCown bird. Um, I don't know what this bird was, but it was named after John P. McCown. Do you know who John P. McCown was? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, sit down, take a deep breath. That was a bird that was named after John P. McCown, and he was a Confederate general. Oh, my Lord! Change the names of these birds! So now the bird is called the Thick Billed Longspur. After they amended it after naming the naming guidelines to explicitly consider social justice reasons. Because of the associations with racism and slavery, it was decided that this name needed to be changed. I'm speechless. Talk amongst yourselves for a minute while I gather my thoughts, will you? That's right, folks. We, uh, we have uh, war in every corner of the world. We have inflation through the roof. We have a Biden family crime, Biden fam, crime family corruption. We've got all kinds of stories in the headlines that really do affect us. But what's really important? Racist bird names. That's what's that's what we've got to get a grip on right there. Racist bird names. Thank God somebody has decided to save America from racist bird names. I tell you the truth, I'm so glad to hear about this because I cannot sleep at night. It, you don't know what I've been going through, folks. Night after night, I toss and I turn and I'm sweating and I can't, I just can't get a decent night's sleep. I'm getting ulcers because of racist bird names. I've been waiting for somebody to tackle the problem the greatest problem facing America right now. And finally, glory, hallelujah, somebody is tackling the greatest problem facing the world. Racist bird names. Gah! Can you believe? Woo! Racist bird names. This ties in really well. With the la this goes on and on, but I, I, I can't take it anymore. This ties in really well with the last story I want to share uh, with you today. How many of you uh, devoted followers of the Triple T channel, uh, how many of you, uh, does the name Stacy Abrams, how many, d does that ring a bell with, with any of you, Stacy Abrams? I call her Big Mama Stacy Abrams. And now, if you're watching me from the state of my beloved home state of Georgia, where I'm trying to get back to, but if you if you're watching me from Georgia or probably around the southeast, you know who I'm talking about. Stacy Abrams, Big Mama Stacy Abrams, is the twice rejected gubernatorial candidate. She ran for the governor of Georgia, uh, what five six years ago, and lost to current governor Brian Kemp. And then she came back in 2020 and ran again. And this time, Kemp really thumped her butt good. Uh, I should have printed off a picture of Stacey Abrams. But Stacey Abrams recently sat down for an interview with Jen. Let me circle back with you on that. Saki. You know who I'm talking about? Jen Saki, former White House press secretary. Uh, the first one for uh, Obama. Uh, uh, not Obama. For Biden who's now been replaced by Karine Jean-Pierre. But the first person to have the job was uh, red, the perky little redhead Jen Psaki. Uh, Jen, uh, uh, is, is, the, is, the, is the son going to come up today? You know, let me circle back with you on that. 
Jen, what's 2 plus 2? Can you tell us what 2 plus 2 is? Mm, you know, let me circle with you back on that. That's Jen Psaki. Political activist and failed gubernatorial candidate Stacey Abrams of Georgia said Sun. I'm so proud she's from my home state. Said Sunday on MSLSD's, sorry, MSNBC's Inside that she believed the criticisms leveled at Vice President Kamala Harris were based on misogyny and racism. Anchor Jen Psaki said, I want to ask you about the Vice President because she has been under a huge amount of scrutiny through her entire time in office. Yeah, that's true. I think there's a lot of reasons for this. But I want to ask you as a prominent woman of color who's run for office, do you think she would be receiving the same critiques if she was a white man? Abrams answered, no. Saki said, no, not at all. And Big Mama Stacey Abrams replied this, get this, no. We will always question the person behind the person, but we cannot ignore the misogyny and racism that remain very prevalent in our politics. And for those behaviors that don't rise to misogyny or racism, there's also just a difference. Our expectations are set for the traditional white male vice, pre vice president. Saki said, well, that's what it's always been. Abram said, it's what it's always been. We're not always great with new. But more importantly, I know that if you filter through the critiques, if you think about how she has been castigated, there is inextricably linked to race and gender. I applaud the poise which, with which she has responded. When I think of uh, Vice President Kamala Harris, the word poise doesn't come to my mind. But I gotta, I gotta say this, um, Big Mama Abrams, could it just be that people have a problem with Kamala Harris just because she is a dumbass? or because you're a dumbass, or just because she is simply not qualified for the position she holds? Is it possible that people like me, a colonial plantation-owning uh, Colonel Sanders bowtie-wearing white man in Alabama doesn't like Kamala Harris, or you for that matter, simply because you're incompetent, simply because we don't agree with you on issues. But with people like you, Stacey Abrams, and people like Kamala Harris, Kathleen Kami, it can't just be that we disagree with you on matters of policy. It can never be, Stacey Abrams, that we simply disagree with you on the issues. If we disagree with you, it's always got to be because of racism. It's always got to be because we're misogynists, because we hate women, and we're homophobes, don't you know? All this stuff, yeah, that's your key word. That's what you... The word you use to stir up your base, people like me that simply disagree with you because we think you're wrong, it can't just be that. You can't just have an honest discussion on matters of policy and on issues. It's got to be, they disagree with me because they're a racist. Everybody's a racist, don't you know? Stacey Abrams, I don't give a damn what the color of your skin is. I don't give a damn what the color of Kamala Harris's skin in is. That does not matter to me one whit. I could not stand Lord Obama, not because he was a black man, but because I disagreed with him on just about every issue you can think of. But for, but for people like Stacey Abrams, it can't be that. You can't just disagree with them on issues. They're not honest enough to say that. No, it's got to be I disagree with them because I'm a racist. And isn't it funny, to people like Stacey Abrams and Jen Psaki, it's only old white boy, oh good old white boys like me that can be racist. That's right. Stacey Abrams can't be racist, don't you know? Barack Obama could never possibly be a racist. Mayor Eric Adams couldn't possibly be a racist, nor could Kamala Harris be a racist. No. Maxine Waters? No way she's a racist. Sheila Jackson Lee? No way she's a racist. But people like me? Yeah. 
Donald Trump, oh yeah, he's a racist. Ted Cruz, yeah, obvious racist. They are so stereotypical and they don't have any ammo in their policy guns, in their philosophical guns. They can't defend their positions, folks. In the market of ideas, they always lose. In the free marketplace, in the free exchange of ideas, they will always lose and they know it. That's why they have to sink to the lowest common denominator. You don't agree with me, therefore you must be a racist. It's it's so disingenuous. It's it's just disgusting. You can't have an honest conversation with people like Stacey Abrams because she's always going to kneecap you. She's always going to do the low blow, which is to call you a racist. It can't possibly be that we just have a matter of disagreement on policy. No. People like me don't like Kamala Harris simply because we're racist. We're inbred inbred jeds, don't you know? We ain't got no sense. We're just gun-toting, bitter clingers like Obama called us. We can't intelligently discuss anything. We just, we're just we just racist, misogynist, homophobes, bigots, prejudiced. You can't have a discussion with these people, folks. You know what you can do with them? You just have to defeat them at the polls. That's what you have to do. Defeat them and then ignore them once they're out of power. And defeat them again and again and again and again. And while you've got the power, you've got to go for the throat and do what's right. This is the thing that I hate about Republicans more than anything else. It is that they do not know what to do with themselves once they do get a win. Democrats do. Democrats know what to do. When they win political office, they know, by God, they know what to do. But when Republicans win, by and large, they're almost apologetic. Oh, we won? We, you mean we won? Oh, well, what do we do now? You go for the throat. That's what you do. You stamp your opposition out like a cockroach. That's what you do. You won? Act like a winner. But all Republicans know how to do is just apologize. Like Mitch McConnell. I mean, he can't. He can't get in bed quick enough with the opposition. He is the opposition. Mitt Romney, they're disgusting. They'll criticize Donald Trump all day long, but they ain't got boo to say about Joe Biden. That's what's going on, folks. Thanks for bearing with me, man. I was all over the board, wasn't I? Do me a favor. Give me your comments down below. I'd love to hear what you have to say about what I talked about today. Please do me a big favor. Give me a thumbs up on this video. Like this video. Hey, share this video on your social uh, media. Share it uh, Share it with your next door neighbor. Share it with your mama. Share it with your daddy. Share it with your spouse. Share it with the preacher. Share it with your friends. Share it with the enemy. Share it with the tax man. Share it with... Oh, don't share it with him. Share it, share it, share it. If you have not yet subscribed to the Triple T channel, you may do so down below, and I would appreciate it very much if you did. Everybody go out there. Have a tremendous Monday. Thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye now.